This set of slides is about the use of selected economic indicators. And in this specific presentation, we explain how to use the Lorentz curve and Gini coefficient to measure the distribution of income in an economy. So when we look at measuring inequality, we look at the distribution of income in a economy. So the distribution of income is how total wealth is divided amongst all the citizens of a country. And this is extremely difficult to measure. We will look at two ways to measure it, the Lorentz curve and the Gini coefficient. So let's first look at the Lorentz curve. Assume there's a country with only five persons who in total earned 100 rand. So let's first draw the outlines of the Lorentz curve. This is a weird looking graph, but let's name the axis and then you will start to understand better. So on the vertical axis, we show the cumulative percentage of income and on the horizontal axis, we show the cumulative percentage of population. So we're going to show the cumulative percentage of income earned by the different groups, the cumulative percentage of the population. So this is the line of perfect equality. So what it will show us, it's, for example, is on this line, 40% of the population will earn 40% of the income. 60% of the population will earn 60% of the income. So that is why this is the line of perfect equality. So the five people included now in our economy should be arranged from the person earning the least to the person earning the most. So we have John earning 5 Rand, Peter earning 10 Rand, Susan earning 15 Rand, David earning 25 Rand and Sophia earning the most at 45 Rand. So if we add this together, it's 100 Rand. So let's keep that there. So let's look at John. He is now the bottom 20%. So it's 1 divided by 5 gives us 20% of the population. And he earns 5%, 5 divided by 100 of the total income. So 20% of the population earns 5% of the total income. So that is the first point. Then we look at the poorest 40% of the country. So that is John and Peter. Together they earn 15% of the total income. So 15 divided by 100 gives us 15%. So if we show that on the graph, 40% of the population earns 15% of the total income. Now the first 60%, so John, Peter and Susan, together they earn 5 plus 10 plus 15 is it 30 Rand divided by 100? In other words, 30% of the total income. So if we show this on the graph, 60% of the population earns 30% of the total income. The first 80%, so John plus Peter plus Susan plus David, earns 55%. 5 plus 10 plus 15 plus 25 is 55 divided by 100 gives us 55% of the total income. So on the graph, 80% of the population, the first 4 out of 5 persons, earn 55% of the total income. So that point represents the income. And then the last point is all the persons in the economy together earn 100% of the income. So we're going to end up at this point. Now we connect these red dots and that line, when we connect these different points, 
is the Lorentz curve. So if the Lorentz curve is closer to the line of perfect equality, it means that the income distribution is more equal. And if the line is further away from the Lorentz curve, like the yellow line, the income distribution is more unequal. So the Lorentz curve can be used to calculate the Gini coefficient. First color the area of deviation from the line of perfect equality. So that is the pink area. Then we divide this pink area by the area of this total gray triangle. So the pink area divided by the total gray triangle. So if the Gini coefficient is zero, it means it's a perfectly equal society because then the Lorentz curve will be on the line of perfect equality. Whereas a Gini coefficient equals to 1 means a perfectly unequal society, then the Gini coefficient will lie on these axes. So therefore, as we know, the Lorentz curve will lie somewhere here. The Gini coefficient will be between 0 and 1. So the larger the Gini coefficient, the further the Lorentz curve lies to the right, the more unequal the income distribution in that society. You should now be able to explain how to draw a Lorentz curve, how to explain what a Lorentz curve means. You should be able to explain how to calculate the Gini coefficient and you should be ex able to explain how the value of the Gini coefficient can be interpreted.